Hey and welcome back to my video series where I'll show you how I make my rock paper scissor tops. In the last video I created 3 digital models and had them 3D printed. I will now take those prints and sand them smooth to make molds from. But first I need to drill holes into the bottom of the tops. This is so that I can mount them on a stick and spray primer over them later. This is part 2 of let's make a toy the mold making process. Now, although I ordered the highest quality prints I could get, they still have some striations from the 3D print layers. These were printed at 16 microns, which is still pretty darn fine. But using sanding sponges, I am able to smooth the contours of the prints quite easily. In order to get into the finer details, I used various files. This needle file is great for getting into tight grooves. The next step will be to spray primer. The primer will fill in any surface scratches or dents, and then I will sand and prime repeatedly until I am happy with the surface quality. Something I learned about primer is that it does not like heat and humidity. I did this during the summer and it was like 95 degrees and crazy humid out. I did a couple of passes when I realized that something was off. My primer had sprayed out unevenly and dried before it even hit the surface of my print. This left it looking grainy and I had to sand it smooth all over again. I then decided to go to plan B, which was to prime them indoors. I used my homemade spray booth and turned on my dehumidifier. This helped immensely. Not fun, but a good learning experience. After each coat of primer, I sand the prints to remove high spots. I use a wet sanding technique where I fill a tray with water to keep my sanding sponge and print wet at all times. Sanding with water results in a much smoother finish than dry sanding. This is because the water acts as a medium to carry away the sanding grit, and this leaves smaller scratches on your part. It also keeps the primer from clogging up my sanding sponge. This is a must if you want a smooth, even finish. This is the result of that entire process. By sanding and priming over and over again, you can even out the surface until it's really smooth. It takes time and patience, but it was definitely worth it. Also, having a high resolution 3D print to start from was a huge time saver. Once all the 3D prints have been primed and sanded smooth, they are ready for mold making. This is the part you've all been waiting for. I will be making a two part mold, which means that the mold will come apart into two halves. To do this, I enclose my top into a layer of clay. I am using a non sulfur based clay because sulfur inhibits silicone from curing properly. I make sure to sculpt the clay evenly around the parting line of my top. This rubber tip tool comes in handy for smoothing the clay in hard to reach places. I then use the end of a brush to poke holes into the clay to make registration marks. The idea behind this is that when I pour the silicone, it will fill in those holes and become keys. The other half of the mold will then fit those keys and keep the two halves aligned. Once that's done, I hot glue a paper cup to the clay to act as the mold wall. This needs to be airtight so that no silicone leaks out the bottom. I will be pouring these molds and putting them inside a pressure pot to cure. The pressure pot will make sure that any air bubbles in the silicone will be compressed until they are almost non-existent. I mix the batch of silicone and usually I just eyeball the amount I need or use old molds as a reference. However, there are formulas out there for determining the right amount based on volume and mass. Now I'll speed up the video. Notice that I pour the silicone in a very thin and steady stream. This also reduces the chance of any air bubbles being trapped. Once the first half cured, I carefully removed the clay while leaving the piece intact in the silicone. As you can see here, I've attached gates to the bottom of my top. These gates will act as pour spouts and escape vents for air bubbles when I'm pouring resin into the molds. I rebuilt the mold wall and sprayed a layer of mold release all over it to make sure that the new silicone wouldn't bond to the first half. Sometimes even if I'm really careful and take all the precautions, I can still get air bubbles in the mold or calculate the wrong amount of silicone to use. I made that first mold as a test and once I saw that it worked properly, I started pouring the rest of them. In the end, I made about 9 two-part molds. I only had one pressure pot at the time and the silicone I used takes a full day to cure, so it was about a full week of intensive mold making. 
Later on, I'll use the cast resin pieces to mold from so I can pour more molds at the same time. After mold making, it's on to resin casting. This is a clip from the next video where you'll get to see the finished resin tops. Please subscribe to my channel to know when it comes out. That's it for now. I know I covered a whole lot, but I think it's important to know about how a prototype gets polished up to go through the whole mold making process. Thanks for watching, and you can find out more about my work on my website or through my social media accounts. See you next time!